Hey everybody, Jason here. So yeah, it's uh, the beginning of July and I'm out at Algonquin Park. It's a incredibly beautiful day. Uh, we just got over a like really long stretch of a heat wave and today is around 24 degrees Celsius. As you can see, mix of sun and cloud, light breeze. Yeah, beautiful conditions and it's supposed to be like that all weekend. So I'm out here on my own. I'm gonna spend a few nights and uh, yeah see how it goes but instead of rambling about my plans why don't we just get the video started All right, well, I guess this is gonna be camp. So it's pretty good looking actually. And uh, I checked my compass and it faces west. So, so that opening behind me there, with any luck, I'll have a nice sunset. Um, haven't looked around yet. There's a, as for the site itself, it's pretty clear. Um, meaning like there's, you know, there's lots of spots to set up a tent for myself easy enough um, like I said I haven't had a real look around what I did first was I just well basically came and looked to see if there's any signs of animals hanging out um, and also signs of idiots there's always signs of idiots um, and what I mean is garbage left behind every time I've had any problems with wildlife there's been garbage left behind. Now Algonquin is uh, like it's a popular place so you know it's if it was remote and you know hardly traveled you'd have fewer idiots. Um, 
it's busy and it's an hour drive north of Toronto thereabouts so yeah it's not remote it's busy you get more idiots so yeah lots of tin foil um, a can beer can and a package of what was dew worms so anyway um, it looks like it's pretty old there's no bite marks in any of it so that's a pretty good sign so I'll look around and uh, just see if uh, like there is another sign of animals if that's if there's any scat left around so I'll have a look around um, last summer same lots of garbage at one campsite and actually saw a bear crap with a candy wrapper in it so and sure enough a bear came to camp that night so um, anyway yeah have a look around there's no uh, no bench or anything like that so hopefully I can find a couple pieces of dead wood to set something up um, there is already whatever a few little pieces of firewood which is good um, I don't know how much of a fire I'll have it's actually really dry and the area itself um, north of Huntsville there's a like a fire ban so I asked at the park office there's no ban in the park right now but uh, like they said just keep them to a minimum and be responsible which I will be um, definitely don't want to be the cause of a fire in the park that would suck um, suck for so many reasons but yeah this is not bad actually just I'm away from the fire pit here and there's another big clearing and there's a nice tree right here that I can do a bear hang from so maybe maybe that's what I'll do here um, I'll just I'll try to turn the camera and show you back up a bit so let's see all right so I've got this tree on the right right big tree see nice branch that sticks out so if I can get the paracord up over that I'll still use the pulley system and I'll tie it off to the one over here to the left so that should work well um, and that will definitely be 10 feet off the ground so yeah that should work I'm just thinking how high is that but my paracord's 50 feet long both lengths so I'm sure it's not over 50 feet yeah it's nice so have another look Let's see what else is around here I guess this just basically bottoms out towards the the lake should have a look at the thunderbox that's like the selling point, you know? It's funny, in real estate it's all about the kitchen, but in a campsite, where are you gonna go do your business? So, some poison ivy down on the ground here. I'll show you that. Leaves of three, let them be. Okay, so it is, like I said, it's early July, so the bugs are still out, but they're not that bad. I've been bit a few times. I've got some uh, bug spray. I'll use that in a little while. don't like to use too much. I'm sure it'll be bad at night, so if I can hold off, then I will hold off. I can't actually find the Thunderbox. Lots of moose poo on the ground. So, yeah, black flies. Anyway, I'll just put pants on and a long sleeve shirt when I get set up. There's another trail just over here to the left, so I'm guessing. Actually, it's the same trail that the canoe is sitting on. It's just further up the hill, so my guess is the Thunderbox is there. Let's go find it. Aha! There we have it.
kind of a new one, I think. Old box, new hole. Anyway, that'll do. Yeah, I think the bugs have found me. Let's get back and find a pair of pants. There's quite a bit of poison ivy around here too, so definitely should throw some pants on before I regret it. Well, set the tent up. I'm just gonna leave the, the fly off for now. I might leave it off completely. It's nice and warm. I think it's supposed to get to like, uh, like seven degrees Celsius this evening. Um, no rain or anything. Clear sky, tomorrow's supposed to be clear. I don't even think they're calling for cloud tomorrow. Um, so it should be good, you know, nice breeze. My sleeping bag's good to like minus one or minus two, the one I brought, so. Yeah, it should be cozy. Um, yeah, gonna figure out, try to find some deadwood for a bit of firewood. Changing my mind on the fire. Uh, yeah, the bugs are actually, they found me. So, yeah, getting swarmed a little bit. So maybe a bit of a fire, a bit of smoke might drive them away. So, yeah, I'll have to keep an eye on it. I'll take my baler bucket as well and fill it and just leave it next to the fire and not let it get too big but you know mainly just get some smoke blowing around a bit um that'll be good to get a bit of a bed of coals going so i can uh cook dinner um yeah need to figure out something for a seat too if i'm lucky Okay, well, I got the food bag hung up. Actually, hung up really easy this time. Usually it takes forever. Not forever, but, you know. Well, the longest it's taken has probably been like 15 minutes or something. But this was the first go. I just threw it up and, yeah, up it went over the branch and that was that. So, yeah, good. And uh, I'm a huge advocate for using the pulley system of uh, hanging a food bag, but uh, yeah, had that branch hanging out, so I just threw it up over, no pulley this time. I don't think I've ever not used a pulley, well, since I learned how to do it properly, but uh, yeah, usually it's difficult to find a, a branch that hangs out horizontally, you know, that you can get 10 feet out from the tree, but uh, yeah, that was brilliant. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to look for some wood. I already grabbed one piece of uh, some dead wood, just some standing dead wood that was down by the water side a bit away from uh, where the food bags hung. Um, so I'm going to see what else I can find. Hopefully I can sort out something for a seat. And, well, it is the woods, so I should be able to find enough for, uh, for fire. Um, yeah, actually, this is kind of ridiculous, looking around. I'm about to have a rant. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing, because this is nuts. Bear with me. Cut tree. Cut tree. Cut tree. Tree cut with axe. 
cut tree. Cut tree. Cut tree. Possibly a cut tree. That one might have been dead. Cut tree, cut tree. Possibly dead. Definitely dead. Cut tree. Cut tree with axe. Cut tree. You get the idea. Like I'm, what am I? I'm a, uh, what would that be? 75 feet from camp. So it's convenient, right? Just get out here and just let's cut down some trees. These nice green trees that are, you know, whatever, 15 years old. It's like horrible firewood, people. But uh, yeah, it's the forest. Like, just look for some dead standing wood. Okay, I'll make the rant short. But I think I've illustrated my point, and it's crazy because, like, it, the further I look back, the, it's amazing how many trees are cut down. It's like, you know, like, I don't know, like, it's crazy. I, I, I don't have words for it. So, when you go out into the woods, don't cut green trees. Green trees, they are good for the environment. They're good for the ecosystem, you know, all that lovely stuff. Dead standing wood is also good for the ecosystem, but it's dead already. So if you cut what's living, then you're leaving what's dead, then you're just taken away from the forest. Now, I'm not anti-logging or anything like that. That's sustainable, you know? It's managed. People coming out into an area to camp, that's not, you know, it's not being managed. You're just coming out. You're a guest, right? So, the thing is, yeah, you might have to walk a little bit away from camp to find the wood that you need. You know, don't walk kilometers away and totally get lost, but there should be nothing wrong. You know, people who are here, you know, in this park have paddled in. This is backcountry camping, right? They've paddled in. And I'll tell you, today it was, today was a challenge. Maybe I'll talk about that later, but uh, it wasn't that difficult, but it was a bit of a challenge. It was solo and it was windy and stuff like that. But that aside, my point is, we put effort, physical effort, to get out here. You know, it's like physical ex exertion. So how can you not have enough physical capability to walk a few extra feet into the woods to locate that dead wood? I'll never get it. You know, like, if you're not capable of navigating in the woods to find firewood that's suitable like maybe you shouldn't be out here I don't know I don't really want you in my forest anyway not if you're gonna destroy it anyway rant over but you know and actually here how far did I go you were with me the whole time and there right in front of me I see uh, two uh, dead trees right there, you know, I'll probably find another one if I just looked a little harder, you know. Ay, ay, ay.
Okay, well, I got the uh, camp set up. Got a bench sort of stick to sit on. Um, tent set up, the line hung for the food bag. Um, had the food bag hung up while I was doing everything. Not that, you know, there's any animals running around, well, maybe chipmunks and squirrels and stuff like that running around looking for food, but, you know, everything else, you know, they're not. But the thing is, when you're out solo, you're just too quiet and, uh, you know, you see a lot more wildlife and, you know, it's more likely that something could wander through camp and, you know, having food laying around when something might happen to wander through is just a bad idea. So I always hang it up and uh, it just, you know, safeguards everything, makes it safer for me, safe for my food. <laughs> um, bugs have been bad on and off. When I go into the bush, it's bad out here by camp, not so much. Um, the fire is helping keep them away and that's good. Uh, I've got food cooking. I put uh, some of those small potatoes, nugget potatoes or whatever, about, uh, I don't know, half a dozen to a dozen of them, uh, boiling them up on the fire right now. I've also got a little steak that I'll throw on the fire in a little bit and then flip it over, you know, get it cooked on both sides and then I'm going to throw it in the pot and I've got some, uh, just like a gravy mix, so I'll throw the gravy in and just cook it up all together basically. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a bit of an interesting trip, you know, it's a, I've got this whole lake to myself which is fantastic, nice and quiet, and the weather is perfect. Um, the bugs are what the bugs are, you know, it's that time of year, so it's expected. Um, and uh, I've got this boat, this uh, skin-on-frame boat that has been lent to me. It's uh, built by a guy, John, from uh, uh, Backcountry Custom Canoes, and he builds skin-on-frame uh, canoes uh, to order basically um, yeah all of his boats are named after a different uh, type of trout which is kind of cool um, so this one here is the brookie which is a, a solo he's got another smaller solo called an aurora um, that one's named after a, a aurora uh, trout that uh, it's actually it's uh, only found in Ontario so um, that's kind of neat. And then he's got a, a tripper that's, uh, uh, or I should say a tandem tripper that he calls the Laker. And there's another one or two. Um, just can't remember. Uh, but yeah, pretty neat. I've been interested in skin boats for a long time. And uh, like a really long time, probably 10 years, I read first about them. And then recently I saw uh, Nick down at uh, Gilmont uh, Kayaks, uh, he's been building a skin-on-frame version of his micro bootlegger and I saw photos of him out uh, kayaking around the Atlantic and uh, I sent him a message about it and I I've heard that they're very durable so and that's what he said as well that you know they're that they're surprisingly durable um, and, uh, yeah, I wanted to give it a try. Um, Nick told me that the, the thing with the kayak is that it uh, doesn't have any uh, built-in bulkheads because of the just the building process. And uh, so that's the downside to it, I guess. You know, if it fills with water, it fills with water. And there's not going to be any type of flotation compartment. And the same would, you know, be said about uh, th this canoe is that there's no uh, no type of additional flotation. Um, you know, when I compare to like a commercially made canoe or kayak, well canoe, uh, usually up at the, the ends there's like built in like bulkhead basically, but it's just a air compartment. Sometimes they fill it with foam. Uh, more times than less, it's just air behind it. Um, and that's just, you know, so if the boat, whatever, if you fill up or you capsize or whatever, you have that little bit of extra buoyancy built in. So this doesn't have it. 
uh, paddling in was good. The uh, just like any boat, you know, if you've paddled around different boats, you know what I'm talking about. When you get in a new boat, you gotta get the feel for it. So I had to get the feel for it. I started off with the the bending branches expedition canoe paddle. Um, the wind picked up, and I think also I would say possibly the seat placement in this boat is probably a little bit, not much, but probably a, just a little bit forward for a canoe paddle. Um, it is, you are sitting a little bit back. It may even be an asymmetrical canoe, I'm not sure, but you are fitting, you are sitting a little bit back from, you know, the widest point. Uh, but what I found was that my uh, canoe strokes were like a little bit too strong and I'd have to change sides and um, which is something that I'm sure I could play with and you know figure out for the boat uh, but I wanted to get to camp <clears throat> and it was windy also crazy wind actually the wind was blowing from two or three directions at times so uh, I just switched over and I brought a uh, my uh, double bladed paddle, uh, it's also Bending Branches Navigator, um, <clears throat> which is a really nice paddle. Both of them are. The, the Navigator, though, it's a carbon fiber shaft, so it's quite nice. Um, nice because it's light, nice and light, and uh, it, like the blade also has nice shape to it, so it just, yeah, it's, you know, the function works for me. Um, so when I switched up to that paddle, it went really good. And uh, I got onto the lake, and because of the wind, it was very choppy, crazy choppy. You know, it was, uh, the conditions were, the wind was mostly blowing from, what is it, so, uh, so that's west, what is it, north, east, south, west. So the wind was blowing from the north most of the time. Uh, and then it would change and it would come from the west and it would also come from the east. And there was one time when I was out uh, on the other side of this island over here and I actually, so when I'm paddling and I recommend for anyone, not only when you're solo, but especially when you're solo, when I'm paddling, I'm always looking for how far can I swim? You know, like where's the shore? Where's the shore to the island? Where's the shore to, you know, the mainland? If I'm going to tip or something happens, can I swim to shore? Because nobody out here is going to save me. So I'm looking around a lot, and uh, I saw, like, a, I don't know what you call it, a wind burst or whatever, you know, straight down onto the water. And, like, literally the, the waves went out in, like, 360 degrees. So, yeah, that was interesting. Um, not frightening, but... You know, that point when you feel that you're definitely going to be cautious with what you're doing. Um, but the boat handled it, right? Like, I'm here, and uh, the waves did crest over the sides a couple times. I'm interested. I'm going to have a look a few times. It seemed like the water line, uh, you know, the skin, skin on frame is hard chined because it's got the, the strainer. Uh, stringer strainer stringer one of the two pieces that run lengthwise and then it also has ribs within it but the lengthwise strips are what create the hull shape and because that they're flat and you know between each stringer they uh, that's called a hard chined hull so uh, anyway the two stringers from the gunnel down that's where the water line was when I was sitting in it. And when I look at around about the middle of the boat, it does look like that would be about about four inches. And so it's probably a, you know, give or take a four inch water line. And that's where the water was most of the time. From the gunnels down to that second stringer, it looks to me like it's probably it's probably eight inches so so I would say you know at times I had waves out there that were well higher than eight inches because I had I don't know I had 
three or four of them crest over the side. Um, actually had one touch my elbow when I was paddling. So that was a higher one. Um, yeah, it was just a, you know, part of the adventure though. So, you know, and I don't want to shrug it off. I don't want to, you know, encourage people to get out in a boat and go in conditions that you're not comfortable in and take those kinds of risks. Like I said, I was always looking to make sure that I was close enough that if I was to tip over or the, you know, get the, the boat swamped, that I would be able to swim to shore. Like I said, no additional flotation in the boat. So likely the boat would sink or at least sink enough that, you know, I'm not gonna climb in to, you know, bail it out from the inside. And, uh, you know, I'd, it's early summer. I think the water's probably a good temperature where, you know, possibly I'd be able to lift it from you know, like treading water and lift it. It's a very light haul. It's 28 pounds. Um, so possibly I'd be able to lift it from within the water and, you know, get some of the water out. But like you can imagine, a canoe full with water is going to weigh quite a bit too. So, so yeah, safety. Keep an eye on how far the shore is. And, uh, you know, like I was saying, I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and do solo trips. I just happen to be on one myself. So, yeah. Anyhow, so, yeah, so I've got this cool boat, and I've also got a, it's funny, I went to get a boat, and he gave me this, uh, this stove to try out. Uh, you probably know that I have a firebox stove. This is a... Uh, Oh hoo hoo or something like that. Oh hoo hoo. Anyway, I'll I'll try it tomorrow. Um, it's a different kind of stick stove, but yeah, we'll try that. And uh, I've got that new headlamp of mine. I'm gonna try out again out here. Um, yeah, phenomenal condition. So I think it's gonna be a good trip. Knock on wood, right? <laughs>